Sometimes I look at a map and see something that just sticks out and captures my interest for a while. Like, I'll notice this random spot and think, huh, well how did that end up like this on the map? And I'll learn some interesting bits of history. They may not be monumental to the main events of entire continents or even countries, yet they're still interesting in their own way. In this case, I found myself interested in Clipperton Island. It's a small island on the eastern end of the Pacific Ocean, and one of the few places left in the world that are still overseas possessions of a European country. But it's so tiny, why did they want this island? And what's the point of keeping it? So I thought I'd make a video on the history of Clipperton Island. But first, let's talk about this video's sponsor, My Heritage. My Heritage is a very popular website for plotting your family history. You can make your own family tree while having access to over 18 billion records which makes it easier to not only thoroughly complete your family tree, but can even help you potentially discover relatives you didn't even know about. In my case, I've always heard stories about relatives no longer with me, but when you don't grow up with them, sometimes it's harder to picture their place in the family, or how close they truly were to your grandparents or cousins, so plotting out my own family tree keeps it in perspective. There are also fascinating tools such as being able to take older black and white or sepia photos and digitally colorize them. Here's one of my triple great Uncle Zoll, someone very distant from me, but I've heard stories about him and his service during World War I. So by using the colorizing tool, I can change the deep sepia tones to something a lot closer to how he actually looked, which is pretty cool. You can sign up for your own 14-day free trial by using the link in the description, and if you decide to fully subscribe, then you'll get a 50% discount. I definitely think that's worth signing up for. Thanks again to MyHeritage for sponsoring this video. Clipperton Island was uninhabited for most of human history. The Polynesians never reached it, or at least they never left any proof that they did, and so the first people to find it were Europeans, but the record of who found it and when is disputed. Some people think the island was found during the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan's expedition around the globe in 1521. Others think it was found by the Spanish explorer Alvaro Saron in 1528 on his way to the Philippines. But in either case, there was no lasting settlement, so the island was basically forgotten anyway. In 1711, however, the French found it and decided to claim it for France, naming it the Ile de la Passion, because they found it during the last two weeks of Lent, which is often referred to by Catholics as Passion Tide. The island, however, was not really beneficial for large settlement and was mostly used for scientific research. The lack of constant presence on the island made it common as a quick stop for US and Mexican ships. But ultimately, this would become a problem once the United States wanted to collect bat poop. No, really, the US wanted bat poop. I actually made a whole video on that if you're curious to learn more. But basically, in 1856, the United States passed the Guano Islands Act, which encouraged explorers and companies to find islands in the Pacific Ocean that might contain guano and claim it for the United States so that way they could mine it and profit off of it. This suddenly made rarely protected island claims quite vulnerable. And sure enough, the U.S. claimed Clipperton in 1856. Mexico also claimed the island as well, justifying it for how often they used the island for naval stops unopposed. This led to France doubling down on their own claim, and in 1858 they reclaimed the island officially and put it under control of their colony in Tahiti. But because of the nature of the Guano Act, U.S. settlers kept trying to reclaim the island anyway, despite the United States government telling them not to do so. But eventually it would be Mexico that would drive France off the island altogether as they sent a gunboat to occupy the island in 1897, officially establishing a settler colony ruled under a military governorship. Unlike France, Mexico did make sure to enforce their claim more thoroughly and try to develop the island. In 1906, Captain Ramon Arnaud was made military governor of Clipperton and helped with projects such as building the island a lighthouse and helping Mexico benefit from the guano on the island by making a deal with a British mining company. But despite this, Clipperton was still a very isolated island. France would raise a dispute over the island in 1909, but the legal process was slow. The residents got supplies from the mainland only once every two months, and Governor Arnaud was very dedicated to his job, so he didn't leave the island unless he had to. So when Mexico's dictator president, Porfirio Diaz, was forced to resign in 1911 due to the Mexican Revolution, things were going to be a bit more difficult for the island. By 1914, the supply ship had stopped coming altogether, as the war got more complicated. Every once in a while, another random ship would be kind enough to provide supplies and say, hey, maybe you should leave this godforsaken island to avoid starving to death. But the people refused. 
One ship even informed them about the outbreak of World War I since they hadn't heard the news yet, and warned Arnaud, hey, maybe you should leave this godforsaken island to avoid starving to death. However, Governor Arnaud saw his duty as too important to not follow, and refused to leave and ultimately still stayed on the island. By next year, in 1915, there was an outbreak of scurvy which would end up killing most of the island's population. This coincided with the island finally running out of food, which led to the governor finally trying to leave the island to get help. He and four men went on a canoe to pursue a ship they noticed passing by, but unfortunately they failed to reach it. Upon trying to sail back, the waves caused the boat to sink and all four men drowned. At this point, the population of Clipperton was down to 17 people, mostly women and children. The final adult male on the island was the lighthouse operator named Victoriano Alvarez, and he basically went insane. With Governor Arnau dead, he declared himself king of the island and would go on a spree of attempting to assault most people on the island, and occasionally even murder. Finally, on July 18, 1917, one of Alvarez's victims, Tirso Rendon, murdered him in self-defense, and coincidentally on the same day, a U.S. Navy gunship stopped on the island. Of the 17 people in 1915, now only 11 remained, including former Governor Arnaud's son and wife. And all 11 went on to the ship to permanently leave the island, ending the Mexican settler colony. Wait, what about that dispute I mentioned earlier? Well, that dispute with France that was officially raised in 1909 finally got solved in 1931. <laughs> yes, that's right. When the King of Italy, Victor Emmanuel III, was given arbitration over the matter, it took him 22 years to make a decision. Even with World War I understandably delaying the process, that feels surprisingly long. Either way, in 1931, Victor said it was French, so France finally had the island back. It went back to being attached to French Polynesia and being mostly used for scientific research, aside from a temporary U.S. occupation at the end of World War II. However, while the island story mostly settles down after World War II, there is one more interesting tidbit. Ken Stager, the Pig Slayer. Okay, he wasn't actually called the Pig Slayer, but stick with me. Basically, at one point, a tourist brought feral pigs to Clipperton Island, and it negatively impacted the populations of local native wildlife, especially the brown booby population. An ornithologist from Los Angeles, one who studies birds, named Ken Stager decided to take matters into his own hands in protecting the island's brown booby population. With a shotgun, he single-handedly slayed all 58 feral pigs on the island, which did ultimately allow the brown booby population to skyrocket to the second largest population on the planet. So, ultimately, Clipperton is a very isolated place, with a history that is simultaneously isolated despite its connections to many other places around the world. But that doesn't stop it from being neat to learn about. I'm Emperor Tigerstar, and I'll see you guys next time.